So morning all, we are out with RB and we're on a Titan and this Titan came in for warranty work and customers complained he had trouble starting it in the morning and uh, sent a video and we could tell from the video as soon as he turned it over, the uh, battery was flat, you could see that he'd got uh, his right hand indicator on every time he hit the uh, start button the lights would dim so battery had gone flat, we've charged it and we've gone through the bike now he also reported that it was cutting out on him when he pulled up at junctions sitting here just over a thousand rpm on the bike it's about 1100 rpm on tick over and we've done two test rides on this already i've done two urban routes unfortunately the camera crashed and i lost my footage on that so don't know why typical drift sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but my drift ghost i prefer that because it's so easy to get the footage off it compared to a gopro but he was also saying that he rode it home and it cut out on a dual carriageway so i am out and risking it this morning but staying local to the garage so i'm going to be doing the route down here and then obviously the route backwards and forwards down by our uh, two bp garages just to see and i'm going to sit this Obviously it's done 1555k which means I can take it up to 50. Let's have it service. Now when it came in, and it's not the first Titan to do this, <coughs> obviously going over potholes and bumps, and there are a lot of potholes on dual carriageways and urban roads at the moment due to the roads in Milton Keynes. One thing we have found with the Titans that they shake the throttle body loose from the inlet and create an air gap which either makes the bike rev or not run or cut out so normally part of a routine service now we check that the carb is connected to the inlet and it's all secured because they have been known to obviously shake themselves loose and create an air gap on that inlet manifold now obviously the battery issue once charged was all right and the customer does not need a new battery it started every morning for the last four mornings on the button and we normally move the bikes out move the bikes in and it's been running fine so 1553k was what we started with we're at 1556 so we've done 3k already and i'm going to try and get at least 10 to 12k on this bike just to check everything is all okay and I'm going to stop at a lot of junctions and just see if it will cut out on me or if it will idle or what it will do <coughs> now the one thing we have noticed obviously a lot of people say oh my battery keeps going flat on me if you are doing a short run of say half a mile or a mile to work and then a mile home and then a mile back to work every morning you're not going to get enough time to put charge back into that battery you've got to remember on these and on all the euro 4 and euro 5 bikes the lights are permanently on so you've got two 35 watt bulbs at the back you've got a 10 watt in the rear for you stopping your tail light that is pulling power from the battery as you ride now obviously on a short run you're not going to get enough charge across that battery all motorcycles require at least 10 to 15 minutes before they're going to get enough charge to top that battery back up again simple answer get a battery optimizer or if your vehicle's outside just pop the battery out put it on charge if you're not using it for a couple of days if a bike is stood for absolutely ages that battery power is going to start to drop off you're going to, going to get some re residual leakage off the battery so once a week or so just get it out give it a nice long run only needs about 10-15 minutes just to get some charge back into the battery or on a decent run to work get at least 3 or 4k if you're only doing sort of half a mile or a mile you're not going to get enough charge across that battery to top it back up again so that's what we always say and we found that with the big bikes as well I find that with my quacker I'm on my fourth battery at the moment with that because obviously I only ever ride it on a Sunday it sits outside on the trickle charger but then some weeks I don't start it so it can be stood for up to about two weeks 
and if you've got an alarm on it or even if it's just stood there you are going to drain that battery i know i've been there done it i'm on my fourth battery so mine now runs permanently optimized and the problem is sorted now obviously i went and purchased the lithium-ion battery for it so I always say get yourself a decent battery a decent gel battery little lead acid batteries are good but you get what you pay for cheap battery on one of these something like 25 quid decent one you're probably looking about 40 if you're going down the route of UASA or a gel battery but I'd always say get your bike charged up keep it optimized keep that battery it's such a tiny battery for all these little 125s it's very very quickly and very easy to drain them obviously if you've got the ignition on and you go wandering in and then you come out and it's just sitting there on tick over you need to get some revs on the bike to get the charge across So we're going to go into the urban route, now done a 6k, and pulling it up, no throttle at all, holding it on the back brake, it's ticking over. Same thing again, 1100 RPM, so so far it's not cut out on me, but obviously we do these videos for the purposes of ride testing so the customer can see that his bike is all good. What you do then is hand the bike back to the customer and then ask him to do what we would call a drive cycle which is where you ride it for about a week and monitor and report any issues found with the bike because obviously test riding is good but if we do a test ride and it doesn't show the fault it's down to the customer then to try and grab that fault or get it on video doing it but the Euro 5 Titans are out. They're a little bit more money now, guys. So, obviously, Euro 5 Titans now out. A little bit more money. I'm going off to the side of the bike, off to the side of the van, so we can see me in the mirrors. Don't like being behind a vehicle. I'm going to maintain my space cushion. And, of course, the other news this week... If you haven't seen what happened on the Super Sausage Run while I'm riding this, I can waffle on. I took the GTR out. Very, very happy with her. And we are going to have absolutely oodles of fun now on the new one. The ZX7 went up for sale last night. And I'm asking a good price for it. She's been valued at 4K. And I'm asking three and a half. I need the bike gone to obviously pay for the new one. So if you are interested in RB's ZX7R, which is absolutely bloody immaculate, and it gets serviced all the time by the guys at Eclipse, it doesn't want for absolutely anything. She is pristine, and if you've seen all the runs on the ZX7, you'll know how clean she is. And obviously this year, Bike Shaw valued it at 5.2. So someone's going to get a bargain on that. But the ZX7 is up for sale. As is all my race levers. All my tank bag. Nice car. And the little boy racers are out this morning. So if you're interested in our bushes, ZX7, give me a bell, drop me a messenger. And uh, you could be the lucky owner of that one. I will be doing trying to do a sale video on it shortly. Obviously show you around the bike, do a ride test on it. I've had a lot of people that have obviously commented saying, you can't believe you've sold the ZX, that thing was a legend, it's your channel bike. And I went, yeah, I know, but times do move on. and obviously I need a bigger bike a more upright bike I would love to keep two but unfortunately space at home doesn't allow it and obviously Mrs B is not too keen on me keeping two bikes at home so unfortunately I've got to bite the bullet and one has to go So 
it's going to be sad, sad to see her go with a tear in the eye when she rolls out the door but uh, whoever buys that bike is going to have an absolute blast on her she is so pretty and obviously last of the Jap imports as well so as I say if you are interested pop me a, uh, a post on my messenger or you've got the uh, whatsapp number on there send me a whatsapp if you want let me know and obviously just remember that whatsapp is my personal one so the less people that call me on that the better back round and round about we go down the dual carriageway again and she's still not cutting out on me and we've done 10k on it now and still absolutely nothing she's behaving for a simple reason that is why we ride test bikes to the absolute maximum and then what we are going to do we're going to uh, obviously done the dual carriageway routes I'm basically simulating a nice long ride for the customer. Nice and steady on the throttles we go. And obviously we've uh, topped the tank up on this. And we filled up with uh, BP, which is what we normally use, or Shell. And one thing we always say is avoid supermarket fuel. It's alright for your big bikes and your cars supermarket fuel but 125s and 50s they do get a bit quirky and a bit funny about putting supermarket fuel in them hence why we tend to stick to the uh, the well-known petrol logos like BP Shell, SO, Amoco and all that lot so if you are getting issues with your bike change your fuel up try that first is it just it's poor quality and everyone's like, yes, but fuel all comes from the same place. No, it doesn't. If you go on the, some of the forums, and um, just Google, is supermarket fuel bad for my bike? Or is supermarket fuel bad for 50cc? There are loads and loads of comments on that, and there's loads on the Lexmodo forum as well. My bike runs like an absolute bag of spanners. Have you maintained it? Have you serviced it on time yet? Yeah. Check your fuel. what we would normally do four things to check if you've got issues with your bike just remember fast fast is a very very easy thing to remember fuel air spark transmission so fuel would be are you getting fuel delivery to the uh, injection unit or the carb what fuel have you put in it have you put petrol in it not diesel it's very easily done we've seen that happen a few times air is she getting airflow yeah. is your air box all blocked up are your breather pipes free spark pop the spark plug out put it back in the HT lead balance it on the engine turn the bike over is there a spark at the plug or is the spark plug fouled up is it black or is it a, a nice brown cooked color or does it look a bit blue spark plugs will indicate what's going on and obviously you've done all those, your engine's running fine but you're just not getting any speed or anything, check your transmission have you worn out your drive belt and rollers? have you got the correct air pressure in your tyres? and obviously when we took this one out it was uh, a little bit wandery and obviously I hooked it back to the garage, check my tyre pressure's all okay had another quick round look around it and uh, little bit of play in the headstock bearing so uh, panels off tighten up the headstock bearing she's riding lovely now just a little bit of a tighten that's the other thing you should be checking on a daily basis all your bolts all your bits and pieces check your tire pressures and then just uh, have a quick feel of the front yoke have you got any because obviously with bumps and part holes if you're bouncing the front end of the bike around you are going to uh, slightly loosen those headstock bearings obviously that's another thing to look for so we're now 12k in 
absolutely nothing wrong with this bike whatsoever. Now, all good. Give the customer a call. Nice and steady round the roundabout because it's a damp morning. Shoulder check. Watch the van up the inside. And back down the dual carriageway we go. Open her up. And she's got loads of power. And then bring her up to 50. And ease her back. So bike is running lovely, no issues found, give the customer a call, come and get your bike, it is lovely. Not cutting out at all. And it's just down to basic rider maintenance, a lot of people that uh, buy a motorcycle for the first time that haven't got the foggiest, Apart from putting petrol in it and riding the thing, like following a CBT, how to do basic maintenance. And there are loads and loads of videos on YouTube. YouTube is a wonderful thing at times. It's also a bad thing at times, but I'm just going to sit there and idle. Yep, all good. So YouTube is a wonderful thing. Just for uh, checking stuff up. How do I check my tyre pressures? How do I do a, you know, routine, basic maintenance on my bike? There's loads of videos. Go and look at some YouTube. Get yourself some knowledge. I still do. And uh, did one the other day. And obviously I'm picking up the GTR. I had to change the spark plugs on the GTR. Because I wanted to know how to get into my plugs. And obviously how we do it on a service. Very, very easy, basic maintenance. How do I check my oil levels? Where is my coolant tank? And you can find a lot on YouTube, or even on the forum. So Google, YouTube, wonderful things. Make sure you do check them out. Don't just buy a bike, put fuel in it, ride it, expect it to last you a lifetime, because it won't. And as we say, ACF 50. Oh, my bike's starting to rust. Buy a tin of ACF 50 then. Keep it anti-corroded. All bikes will rot, whether it's a Chinese bike or a big brand bike, all bikes will rot if you don't keep them clean, washed and ACF'd. And you can tell by the condition of my um, Quacker how good she is, because I do look after her and she gets cleaned and washed every week. And a coat of ACF 50 on her every weekend. So we're going to head back to the garage now, all good give the customer a bell, your bike is good to come and collect, I'm not cutting out at all, and I keep, as you notice, I keep rolling off the throttle, I just wanted to see if it's going to cut out while I'm riding, just coming on tick over, final time, pull up at a junction, 1100 RPM, spot on, So go back to the garage. So this was just a ride test for customers and a little bit of a test ride just to check and show how we do uh, draw ride cycles on these and just check a bike after it's come in with any issues. Now down to the customer to do a ride cycle. We shall head back for the obligatory cup of coffee and of course smoke break. Whatever you're doing this week, have yourself a good one. Don't forget thumbs up. And don't forget to do your basic maintenance, always helps. A few more videos coming up today, we're going to be shooting a new Lex Moto bike, watch out that video is up next. First one in the country, and we're going to get out and do the ride test on that, and I don't care if it's raining or not, I'm going to get out and ride that bike, she is beautiful. And I shall be telling you what it is later, until the uh, next ride test, or the next time we are out, be well. Right safe, and from RB, as always guys, big goodbye from me.